the more and more I think about this fight, Javante Tank Davis, Ryan Garcia, the more and more I think it's probably not going to be as competitive as some would hope or imagine. Stick around in this video. I'll explain myself fully as well as where we are today and what the buildup's going to look like. This is your boy, JG. This is The Punch Report. Let's go. Go ahead and get it out of the way. Subscribe to the channel. Like for more. Share with a friend. Let's get into the content. Javante Tank Davis, Ryan Garcia is finally a done deal. As many of you know, it's taken a while to get here, but I think this is one of those rare instances where the timing is pretty much perfect for this fight. Um, it'll be a catchweight, 136 pounds. No title will be on the line. No issue there because this is still a mega fight. Two converging fan bases, social media star in uh, Ryan Garcia, endorsement deals, commercials, things of that nature. And then Javante Tank Davis, really tapping into the Be More vibe. Celebrities are a must at his shows, breaking records, Barclays, uh, DC, spots where he's not even from. He does incredible numbers, former staples, now cryptocurrency arena. He's just really made a name for himself in the sport of boxing. And Javante Dank Davis, on top of all the things that I just mentioned to you, is a tremendous, tremendous fighter. And I wanna stick there for just a moment. Knockouts are plenty with Tank Davis. We all know that. We understand that. But the dude can really, really box and fight. He has every facet imaginable from obviously power, getting knockouts. He'll take risks, um, varying defensive styles from walking guys down with the high guard, going traditional style defense, utilizing catches, parrying, head movement, feints, uh, pull counters. You name it, he does it. And it makes him an exciting fighter and an amazing draw. Well, Ryan Garcia, I don't want to get too ahead of myself, but we know he has the speed, the power, the look to be a massive star in the sport of boxing, the inexperience, the lack of defensive prowess, and being particularly limited on the offensive end could be things that all spell trouble for Ryan Garcia. And just so you guys know, the full video breakdown is coming for this fight. Um, I do keys to victory, so I'll do three for Ryan, three for Tank. I'll do my best to be as impartial as possible, but early prediction right now, I, I don't see this being the fight people think it's going to be um, for one Ryan Garcia. Shout out to him. I think this fight got done because both Ryan Garcia and both Tank Davis's fighters took control of the decision making and said, I don't want to do shit else. Please let's get this, get this fight done and let's make the fans happy. Win, lose, or draw, the fans win. Uh, unlike, you know, the obvious stuff, Errol Spence Jr., Terrence Bud Crawford. That's not something that at this point for me, as a person who's broke that fight down, did like four breakdown videos on that particular fight, all X's and O type stuff. Don't really give a shit about that fight anymore. I'm not really checking for that fight like I once was, um, especially now because I think as more time goes on, the more it favors Errol Spence. Um, it just gets more and more difficult for a guy like a Bud Crawford to overcome some of the physical attributes Spence has as he gets older and ages out. Um, still tremendous fighter, still top three or four best pound for pound fighters on the face of the planet, that being Bud Crawford, but I'm not checking for that fight. And I only bring that up because we saw negotiations stall out. We saw rumors and leak this and social media negotiations, all that shit's a miss. You have two combatants right here, Ryan Garcia, Javante Tank Davis said, let's get this fight done. It's important to me. Let's get it signed. Win, lose, or draw, these guys both wins. And like I mentioned before, my bad. As I mentioned before, we win as fans because this is a hell of a fight. Moving right along, Two City Press Tour was announced, I want to say New York and LA, and then the fight will eventually take place in Las Vegas. Um, I think it's going to be big. I think it's it's going to be something that the sport of boxing needs. I think the timing's great going right into summer. It gives, you, it gives boxing a nice little punch in the arm as far as getting the fans ready for big announcements. Showtime has put out a shit ton of fights. Um, that look really, really good, pay-per-view and free stuff on their network. We know that we're going to get uh, David Benavidez, Caleb Plant coming up pretty soon. So that's exciting stuff as well. But going back to this fight here with Ryan Garcia and Gervonta Tank Davis and my initial statement, leaning towards fun buildup, cool shit talk, awesome ring walks and introductions, non-competitive fight, a little slower than we can anticipate. But Gervonta Tank Davis is in my opinion, just a bit too versatile for a Ryan Garcia. I think when people are doing assessments on fighters, emotions get tied in there. Um, even for guys that you don't really know or are familiar with, a good example of that is 
when I broke down the Your Dennis Ugas fight with Errol Spence Jr., if you go look at the very first video I ever did, I think, I can't remember what I said, but it was something along the lines of Errol Spence Jr. is going to brutalize your Dennis Ugas. I did a second video where I told you guys it will be a doctor stoppage or TKO victory for Errol Spence Jr. This is months before the fight. Just looking at the information you have available um, of those fighters, go back and see the videos. They're still up. They're still posted. I told you then what was going to happen, but you still have people jump in the comment section. Oh, you know, Ugas is undefeated against lefties. Arrow hasn't fought anybody. Arrow's drunk, this, that, and the third. But no one's telling you why your Dennis Ugas would win the fight. Then Arrow brutalizes Ugas. And then we say, well, who was Ugas? And he had four losses and Ray Robinson and blah, 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 blah. Manny Pacquiao was over the hill. We start throwing Ugas under the bus after Errol Spence does what was easy to see, at least for me, what he was, what was going to happen in that fight. Going back to Garcia and Davis. And I, I've admit, just go check out this channel. I got many predictions. I really don't miss when it comes to predictions. Um, those I'm like, I don't know. I think it's like I'm in the neighborhood of like 93, 94% with choosing the winner and how it gets done. Um, anyway, Ryan Garcia, Tank Davis, video coming soon with a full breakdown. The overarching synopsis is this. Ryan Garcia is limited defensively. He almost has no defense um, and he's limited offensively. Uh, he has a fastball jab. That's all he has. He doesn't vary the speed on that whatsoever. He doesn't uh, fight off rhythm hardly at all. He stands very tall. That's well known. And then he has a great left hook uh, to the chin and to the body. Uh, see Javier Fortuna, see Luke Campbell, which he stopped him with, uh, with a little bit of trickery. Sold high, went low, stopped Luke Campbell with the body with a beautiful left hook. So in that scenario, I'm breaking down things that Ryan Garcia does really well, but the list stops then, there. If you even think about his right hand, where he's shown a good right hand um, in spots, Romero Duno was a good spot. Another cat he fought that was early on, uh, he looked pretty good. But if you go to Emmanuel Togo, the right hand was more choppy. Like It looks like he's still developing how to just deploy that off the shoulder, nice, short, and sweet, get extension on it. Um, even in the Fortuna fight, where he got caught with one of the rare punches that Fortuna threw, he's overextending the right hand, all the weights on his lead leg, and his back leg is off the ground and he gets caught with a counter shot, um, I think off the backside for uh, for Chuna, but I digress. Gervonta Tank Davis, as I mentioned before, speed and power, boxing ability, the ability to counter, the ability to go get offense when a fighter is being hesitant. These are all things that Tank Davis has. I think one of the things that's been telling for me in my comment section is, oh, well, Tank Davis gets touched more than you realize. Ryan Garcia and Tank Davis both do something very similar um, when they've identified the guy probably can't hurt him, they'll just walk towards him. I think Tank Davis is a little bit better at that, but it does mean for both these fighters, you're probably going to eat stuff right down the pipe, pop with jabs and things of that nature. But if I eat a jab and then explode your liver with a left hook, I think I won the exchange. You can say what you will about the jab that I hit, that you hit me with, but this fight is over based on my offensive prowess. And both those guys possess that, but that's more to come. Overall, Ryan Garcia, tremendous fighter. This might be a bit of a step up for him. You look at the resume, there's no comps as far as a Tank Davis. Who's the guy that he fought with crazy power that came in in shape and ready to rock? He has zero of those. I can make the argument that Mario Barrios at 140 pounds beats Ryan Garcia and he beats him pretty easily. That's just where I'm at with that. He's fought better guys. Lil San Cruz is a better guy. Isak Pitbull, Isak Pitbull Cruz, excuse me, is a guy that wanted to fight Ryan Garcia, but they opted not to take that bout, which I'm not even really mad at if you think about it. That's a risky fight for Ryan Garcia that doesn't have the notoriety, the flair, and the money-making potential that the Tank Davis fight has, and you might get your ass whooped low-key. So we got to see what it is. This is your boy, JG. This has been The Punch Report. Please like, subscribe, hit that bell icon to be notified when all the latest and greatest videos drop. And we out.